Welcome to my house. Welcome to the Structure Talk podcast, a production of Structure Tech Home Inspections. My name is Ruben Saltzman. I'm your host, alongside building science geek, Tessa Murray. We help home inspectors up their game through education, and we help homeowners to be better stewards of their houses. We've been keeping it real on this podcast since 2019, and we are also the number one home inspection podcast in the world, according to my mom. Welcome to the show. We're here with Ryan Carey today. Ryan is a repeat guest. He's been on this podcast a couple of times. He is a guest blogger on the Structure Tech blog. He he first started guest blogging for us back in, what was it, Ryan? I think it was 2014, right? 2014, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah, we're coming up on 10 years of my three quotes this summer. So, wow. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So so Ryan did the podcast a couple of times last year. We did a, a good podcast where we kind of introduced who Ryan is, what his background is, his business model. He's got a really unique business model. And, and just for anybody who didn't listen to that show or you've forgotten since it was a year and a half ago, again, it's Ryan Carey. His company is My Three Quotes. And Ryan, why don't you just explain a little bit about what My Three Quotes is all about? What do you do that is super unique? Yeah, it is. It is very unique. Far as I know, there's still no one else doing it. But yeah, when it comes to buying exterior improvements to your house, which would be your siding, roofing, or windows, most people want to get multiple quotes, and so they're going to call multiple companies. And you know, every everybody has their own sales process. Sometimes these these meetings can be fairly short. Sometimes they can be three hours, and and you have to kick the salesperson out of your house <laughs> because they're not going to leave you know without trying to get that sale. So creating my three quotes was a way for me to come out, meet with the customer, give an unbiased look at all the different products that are out there, but also what fits their house best. When I can use any product out there and and know a lot about them, that meeting with me is just about figuring out which products we should get quoted out for that house. So I give recommendations on that and looking for, you know, what the customer is is seeking based on colors, styles, things like that. Then I send out the job specs to three contractors who will then send those quotes back to me. I forward those on to the customers in a side-by-side comparison form that shows the three contractors, the job spec, and then the prices. If the customer decides they want to move forward with something, then I come back out there, write up the order with them, basically do what the company salesperson would have done from then on, which is that's how I get paid in this process is I get a sales commission. Just like if you would have called the, the company directly, they'd send a salesperson out. In this case, I act as an independent sales rep for multiple companies. But again, I'm not employed by any of these companies. I'm more the customer advocate than I am the contractor advocate, though obviously I use contractors that I trust very much that are going to take care of our mutual customers. But with that situation, you know, instead of having those three long-winded sales calls, you have one pretty brief meeting with me. It depends on how many questions there are. Otherwise, I'm just there to measure and figure out what should be quoted for that house. So it makes the process a lot easier. Awesome. What's the difference in price if somebody goes with you versus going directly to the company? Is there any difference? Yeah. You know, as far as how companies treat me, they treat me more like a builder um, because I give them multiple jobs. So I really do get the, you know, the best price that they have to offer. Now, when it comes to salespeople individually, the absolute best they could do is try to get close to mine. But in many cases, that's that's not going to be the case. So again, because they know that they're quoting against two other companies on the exact same job scope, they just have to get down to their bottom price and best price because they know if someone else beats them, it's likely they're going to get it. So there really isn't any messing around with the price and discounts and show a big high price. And if you do it now, you know, it's all just about, okay, we know this is going through Ryan, it's going through my three quotes. So we just have to put the best price out there up front. Love it. Uh-huh. Love it. So we're, we're going to dive into some of those sales tactics that these companies use a little bit later in the podcast. Yeah. But today we're going to focus on Windows. Is that right? Well, yeah. And and the entire sales process, really. I mean, Windows is a much different sales process than the other products out there because there is so much to show at a kitchen table. That's why, you know, Windows were really made for the kitchen table sales pitch. Not to say that there aren't, you know, the companies that come in and do a very detailed and long-winded sales pitch on siding or roofing. It's just that Windows 
have such a unique way that they can be presented in a house. And there's so many different brands that, you know, siding, you're limited with roofing, you're limited. There's only so many manufacturers. Other people could get a quote on an existing, you know, a, a siding that's out there and that other people are quoting so they can compare more easily. With windows, you actually have companies that go to a window manufacturer and say, private label this window just for me, because then I'm the only one that has this particular window. It's called this, you know, and then they name it just for their company. So in many cases, you have a company like, like, let's say all side vinyl windows, they make they make a ton of vinyl windows, and they private label a lot of windows for individual companies. But it's not called all side when they do that. You know, they they mm-hmm. call it the custom 4000 or they call it the apex or they call it, you know, there's a bunch of different things that they'll call it. They, they were making, you know, windows for window world as well. At this point, I, you know, I haven't seen a window world quote lately, but all side made, you know, windows for window world for many years, but it, it wasn't called the all side Excalibur, you know, mm. it was called the, you know, the window world model. Sure. Windows are, windows are complicated. There's so many parts and pieces to them and there's so many options available, not only in the material, materials and how it's constructed and the type of glass, but do you want to replace portions of your windows or do a full replacement? And so you're going to help us kind of understand these different questions and materials and then navigate kind of the the best option for the homeowner and be their advocate at the same time, right? And really what you might expect when one of these people comes out. You know, the the very first window sales company that I worked for was your typical 10-step sales process. We have one window to sell you. Here's the pitch book. All the rest are no good. Ours is the best. So in you know and that process is is actually effective, amazingly. (laughs) You know, you really do have so many companies that are still using it. I've seen a little bit of change over the years where, you know, some of the ones who used to do more of a hard sale are going into a little more of a soft sell, but but the the hard sale companies are still out there. And you know what you can expect when you have one of those companies come out to your house, you know, they're they're following a 10 step process. So, you know, they're going to come in there, they're hitting step one, which is the warm up, you know, they're going to small talk, they're going to do some things with, you know, they're going to try to try to find some common, warm you up. Yep. you know, yep. And they're going to try to also just kind of based on what they see and hear from you, try to gauge kind of what kind of person you are, because there's even different sales tactics based on personality profiles. And, Ugh, you know, the a lot what? of these sales companies actually take you through, you know, they have a quadrant of different people and what might be more effective with them, you know, versus others, you know, there's your drivers, there's your, your amiable people, there are your, your analytic, your analytical, type, which, yeah, you know, anytime but, you hear, oh, this is an engineering person, oh boy, okay, we're really going to hit these parts with the parts and pieces and the uh, data, hit them with the data, the spacers, yeah, and the yeah. data and things like that, where some other people are more, they're going to buy on personality if they, if they like you. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, I, I got to ask, did you ever go through DST training at Home Depot? Ryan and I know each other from Home Depot. That's where we originally met. Yes. You know, one of the, so one of the training pieces at, at Home Depot started to touch on that. Uh-huh. Um, but then, you know, when I left Home Depot and went to an actual, you know, window sales company, because the time Home Depot wasn't doing their in-home sales yet at that point, it really went to the next level. And I'm then, sure. you know, learning through there, because that was your your daily life, you know, getting into people's houses and, and trying to figure out what the best way to sell them was. Yeah. What does DST stand for? Department Supervisor Training. Oh, and, okay. And that that was where I first got introduced to these different types of buyers and you know like ryan was saying like a driver and analytical the amiable that all the, mm-hmm. like four different quadrants yeah and it, it it touches on like different personality profiles too but it's more adapted for sales that's where i first heard about it and i still remember going through that it was probably 20 years ago now but yeah it was it was mind-blowing for me at the time and i i still remember it today yeah, yeah and, and, it, it, you're getting into someone's mind, the psychology of how their brain works, and you're playing to that, that weakness or strength, whatever it yeah, is. Exactly, and then and then they train you to be the person that that person tends to respond to more. You know, yeah. because there aren't, you know, if there's a driver and then you come in as a driver, you're going to butt heads. You know, there's yeah. there's different yeah. you know ways wow. to you know. So basically, you're playing a part 
when you're walking in, you know, before you even start the whole sales process. And then, and then from there you're deciding, you know, what, what angle to take, but uh, you know, outside of that, it's, it's a lot of, you know, everyone has to do the same things and here's, you know, okay, we're going to go into the company story. And then that that's when the pitch book comes out and you're going to talk about, okay, here's this particular company. Here's why, you know, they've been in business for this long and here's why this is a trustworthy company. And you're going to see certificates and you're going to see licenses and you're going to see any media that they might've had or, you know, magazine articles. And, and you get through that step, which is the, you know, the, the company step. And then you have to close that step, you know, which is by saying, well, does this seem like a company you'd feel comfortable doing business with customer? Oh yeah. Yeah. That looks mm-hmm. good. Okay, great. That, that step is closed. And now mm-hmm. you, you know, you move, you're basically getting rid of objections mm-hmm. along the way that might come up in the close because these, these objections are, well, I don't re- really feel comfortable with, with that company. It's like, well, actually, you know, we did go through that and you did say that's a company, yeah. you know, you're you building trust, with. right. You know, so yeah. you're, you're just handling objections up front on all these different steps. And then, you know, you get through your company. And then when it comes to Windows, of course, that's where, again, a lot, a lot of things that you can bring out for the customer to touch and feel and look at. And with Windows, you know, not only would you have a cross section of the window and an actual window, but you'd have all these little parts and pieces like in a double hung, what's the balancer made out of? You know, there is it a block and tackle balancer? Is it a constant force balancer? And you have these pieces. And then again, you're saying, here's why this one doesn't work very good. So you got to look out for the ones that have this in it, but hey, look at this one, you know, and then you you show how it works. And again, you're eliminating and putting doubt into any product that might have the other one mm-hmm. you know, that, that you're talking about. So you're handing pieces over there. The other big thing with windows is the spacer. A double pane window has something that is in between that the two pieces of glass attach to. And, you know, o- over the history, aluminum was was the first spacer that was used in most windows. Of course, aluminum is really, you know, conductive for, for heat and cold. So that's why you get so much condensation in the bottom corners of your windows, because you have aluminum spacers and the cold that is you know, especially down in the corners where you have a spacer going up and going horizontally at the bottom, it really conducts the heat and cold. So you'll get the condensation down in the corner. So they started making spacers that were less conductive. And one of the pieces we would use back then is you would take a glass of water and put ice in it. And, you know, ask the customer to get you a glass of water and put ice in it. And then you'd put an aluminum spacer in there. You'd put a stainless steel spacer in there. You'd put a tin steel spacer. And then you'd put one of these very low conductive foam spacers in there. And then you talk for a while and then you have the the customer touch the ends of these and you can see, oh, wow, yeah, these ones are really cold. And oh, this foam one, it's really not cold at all. Yeah, that one's not not conductive. And and so, you know, again, you're using all these little uh, pieces and parts, you know, as that show. But the big one that comes out a lot with windows is the heat lamp. And that's where you have a, (laughs) a full kit of different glass packs and you'll put a heat lamp to one side of it and you'll have the customer put their hand on the other side of that glass pack. And with two clear panes of glass, you'll feel that heat coming through. And then, you know, okay, here's like one layer of low E coating. And oh, now you feel a little less. And then here's another kind. And then, you know, you're waiting to wow them with the last one, which is the one that you're going to sell, you know, and that's the one with the three layers of low E coating and the argon gas and everything else. And they'd put their hand on the other side of that and, it was always a, the, the most common comment was, wow, wow. Cause they don't feel any of that heat coming through, you know? Yeah. So it's reflecting the heat back. And that w- is another part of the, the process by, by the time you get done with that window and you say, okay, is that the window you would like to see in your house? And again, you're trying to close that window step and they would say, yes, you know, and by this time you've eliminated other products and, you know, maybe you're selling a vinyl window at this point and, you know, you've showed them wood and it deteriorating and maybe you showed them a cheaper level fiberglass window that has peeling paint and you've eliminated fiberglass. Because again, you know that every single one of these companies is is going to show not a good fiberglass window if they're pitching against fiberglass. And they're not going to show you a good vinyl window if they're pitching against vinyl. They're going to show you the cheapest vinyl window out there and it's warping and it's coming apart. You're never going to see that high quality because there's high quality in all those levels. There's high quality fiberglass windows. There's high quality vinyl windows. So again, they're just creating doubt. 
And you know what? I got to share with you, Ryan. I uh, one other story on that. Melind, you know, you Melind used to work yes. together doing this. Oh, him well. And, yeah. and uh, one of the stories he'd like to share was whenever they'd go out and, and he'd be trying to sell siding, they'd be talking people into a certain type of siding. I don't remember what they were talking them into, but they you had to start by talking them out of all of the ones that you weren't selling. Yes. And, and he'd say, you don't want steel. Steel can rust. And he never <laughs> could find a picture of rusted, vi- rusted steel siding. So they'd, picture, they'd show a picture of a rusted car <laughs> instead. <laughs> he couldn't find it. I just love that. <laughs> yeah. oh, Sorry, God. go on. Yeah. For siding, I know what what siding panel he was selling at that point, and you know that was even a, a vinyl panel that didn't have a wood grain in it. And what was funny about that is you'd show any other piece of siding with a wood grain in it, and you would pre bend it and crack it because it would it would bend or break around those wood grains. But the smooth one, because since it didn't have the, the wood grain in there, you couldn't do that with. So that was, you're eliminating any wood grain vinyl with that. And then, yeah, you know, eliminating steel with showing rust price, you know, pictures. And it's, yeah, it's, it's quite the process. Yeah. This is really yeah. helpful, Ryan, just to hear about just, you know, what to expect if you're a homeowner thinking about purchasing windows and you're going to go through this process of what to expect and what these kind of these, almost like these mind game tactics are yes. that they're using. Okay. The most important thing when it comes to sales is that every single customer wants to think they're getting a good deal. So that is, you know, whether it's, you know, in in that closing part of the sales pitch where you're showing a really high inflated price and then you're dropping that part, we're going to, here's the reason why you're, we're going to give you a special deal today. Um, that works in the advertising of trying to get you out to the house too. You know, you see all these ads on TV all the time. It's, oh, you're, here's what our... You know, it's called a call to action. There always has to be a call to action, a reason why the customer needs to call that company right now. It's because mm-hmm. we're doing a special deal. You know, we're doing, hey, we're five windows, get one free. We're doing free labor right now. You know, we're doing 75% off labor, you know, and obviously every one of these companies is going to make money off of these jobs. You know, that's, of course, it's a, it's a for-profit industry. And so every one of these different deals they're having that particular month, in the end, makes very little difference on what you're getting as a final price. You know, you're going to see that so often. That's why I, I watch some of these commercials on TV and I, I think, do people, are people really believe in that, that they're going to get this amazing deal or that they're going to get free labor? It's just that they have the windows marked up so much that it fits in there. You know, yeah. it's like all these different, you know, pitches that they have going on, you know, so whether it's in the the commercial that people are putting out or whether it's in the close of the in-home sales pitch, it's so important to, you know, let that customer know that this is why you're getting a good deal today because everyone wants a good deal. You know, I mean, you saw in in retail, which is pretty interesting, you know, there's so many different coupons and things that, that are going on. You go to Kohl's, you know, that's that's always a great example of every single thing is 40% off, it's 60% yeah. off, and then here's your Kohl's cash. And, you know, JCPenney thought several years back, you know, we do the coupon thing too. Our customers are too smart for this. We're just going to give you that upfront low price. Well, it almost sank them. You know, because people really do want to to have that that feeling of getting a good deal. And, you know, you can see it in like certain retail situations. It is actually there are sales, you know, there are legit sales from time to time. You know, you got a Menards. Hey, you can see what the price is every every day. And now we're giving you 10 percent off of that price. Well, OK, you know, everything you can fit in the bag. You know, all right, I'm, I'm getting 10 percent off there. But with these window prices, where do you go to see what where what these windows? window prices are. You don't, you know, a lot of these companies have a list price, but it's so inflated that you can take anything off or you can take labor off or you can, you know, do all these different things to make sure that that customer feels they're getting the good deal. Where in the meantime, you know, I have customers ask me all the time when I'm just, you know, going in to measure and then send them the prices. Hey, I got this, you know, flyer. It says I get this off. You know, do any of your contractors have, you know, any, anything going on like that right now? And I said, well, get that price and then just compare it to the prices you get, you know, that I'm going to send you. And uh, I have a feeling mine are still going to be a decent amount lower, even with these, uh, you know, great, uh, oh, wow, you're getting a, you know, free window or a free door if you buy five windows. You know, it's all just, again, it's, it's psychology, it's customer needs to feel they're getting a good deal. And we need to give the customer a good reason to call 
now as opposed to you know just whenever they feel like doing it. It's oh yeah. boy, we got yeah, done. we're getting a sense good deal. of urgency. Love it, and, th- and this is this is all what you broke down in the blog post, the first in this four part series that we posted, and and we're reposting it now. We've kind of updated yeah. it with today's numbers, some new information mm-hmm. on there, and this yeah. one was window replacement part one. The dog yes. and pony show comes to your house. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you could, Ryan, just kind of talk us through some of the stuff to look for to differentiate between mm-hmm. windows. What's what's the really important stuff to understand? Yeah. Well, and like I mentioned that in that blog post, it's you know the U factor of the window is really important, and then that just gives you the overall you know thermal effectiveness of this window. And with with U factor, the lower the number, the better. Energy Star puts out a, a rating that you know this makes your window Energy Star qualified if it's a 0.3 or below. So then anything you get below 0.3 is you know or 0.3 and below is Energy Star qualified. So and that U factor has to be for the entire window, not just for a certain part of the window, because some some companies in the past have put on you know or in their literature even oh the U factor here is. Uh, boy, it's really low. Look at it, it's 0.22. And then you see something in fine print at the bottom, center of glass. You know, so that was a, a center of glass U factor as opposed to the entire unit. With U factor, you're getting that, you know, that entire rating of the window. And, you know, with a good double pane with like the three layers of low E coating in the argon gas, you can get down to a around a 0.26 U factor, which is really good. With triple panes, you can even, you know, get below that and, you know, down 0.22 and, and things like that. I, I'm not that big into triple pane just because it, it adds so much weight to the sash. It gives it another spot where there could potentially be a seal failure. So, you know, getting a good double pane is my sweet spot as far as what I like with the three layers of low E coating in the argon gas. Low E coating just reflects heat, radiant heat back to its source. So it reflects more heat back into your house in the winter, reflects more away from your windows in the summer. The argon gas is a real heavy gas that goes in between the two panes that just makes it harder for molecules to go spinning around and have temperature transfer. So, you know, you, you add those two things, you get a really good glass pack there. But then, of course, it's important, well, what's the weather stripping like? And, you know, there are other ratings to look at. There's air infiltration, and then there's solar heat gain coefficient. And, you know, some people want a little less tint in their glass because the low E, three layers of low E does add a little bit of tint. And then that cuts down a little bit on the passive heat that you get in the in the winter through the through the sun. You know, so there's a lot of different factors that you can talk about, but really that that U factor is what what tells you the main thing you need to know. So you can, you know, see a window that has a low U factor and it has a lifetime warranty. You know, a lot of the, the some of the fiberglass and vinyl windows have lifetime warranties just because they don't have wood in it that can deteriorate. You know, that's why you don't typically see the lifetime warranty in a wood window. The most common warranty there is a 1020, which is, you know, 20 years on the glass for seal failures and things like that, and then 10 years on the rest of the product. So again, you know, when you have something that can deteriorate, you can't typically do the lifetime. But, you know, getting a good lifetime window from a company that's been around, you know, for a long time. Again, everyone, people talk about that too, put a lifetime warranty on something, but the company's been around for three years or whatever, you know, that company can go out of business and there goes your lifetime warranty. So, you know, getting a a good a good quality product from a company that's been around for a long time with a good U factor lifetime warranty, you know, you're you're going to be in good shape whether that be, you know, fiberglass or vinyl or composite. You know, something that's kind of new to me that I'm hearing from you is the discussion about how the U value can kind of be misinterpreted or <laughs> I guess you know, it, it, the way that it's presented and if it, they're taking it from just a, a portion of the window or center of glass versus it's the overall unit rating, that's mm-hmm. something to look for. And as a homeowner, like, how do you, how do you decipher that? Yeah. So there, there's a the NFRC, which rates, rates windows. And, you know, that's where I, I mentioned too, the, that F stands for fenestration, which uh, is a word that means the door and window openings in your house. So they rate these windows and, you know, when every one of these windows gets installed in your house, they're going to have a sticker on it and that's going to, the sticker is going to show it's right from the NFRC and it's going to show the, uh, the U factor. It's going to show the ratings, you know, everything from your, your heat gain coefficient. It's going to show quite a few different ratings on there, but it's certainly going to show your U factor. 
And then you know that that is what what you're getting, you know, and that, okay. that's why if you're looking at windows, whether it be at a showroom or, you know, a window that someone brought in, you know, take a look at that, you know, and say, and, and then ask them, when I get these windows, are they going to come with the stickers? Because the the stickers are, you know, you save, you know, you, you hold on to those because a lot of times, you know, you have different rebates going on and you know there's there's different whether it's a city or state level program or you know they they always want to see what that u factor is including there there are some like energy savings loans that you can get through the state through the uh, the center for energy and environment here in minnesota and with that they want to see the the u factor too so if i have a customer that's getting a cee loan for a home energy loan because they're usually you know, five, even now they're about 5% loans and you can do that unsecured or secured. You know, they want to see that U factor to make sure you're getting something 0.3 or below. So then I have to provide that to the, mm. to the CEE, to their loan officer there. So that really is the, what you want to see that sticker. Cause if they were saying something, oh, your U factor is this, and then your windows come and you see the sticker and it's not that obviously you didn't get what you thought you were getting. I'm sure that happens, huh? Sounds like it oh, does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And a lot of people, again, aren't even going to look at those stickers or know about the stickers or they can be taken off before they get to the house, you know? So yeah, there's a lot and, of things you can do there. And there's salespeople for cheap windows that don't even know what this is. I was at a trade show once and <laughs> they had this booth and it was like world's cheapest window.com or something like that. And not really, <laughs> but it was, it was, <laughs> they were selling cheap vinyl windows and it was like a flat price, any size, whatever, $99 installed or something ridiculous, yeah. you know, just too good to be true. And, and I, I chatted them up, you know, I just acted really ignorant. Wow. That's a really good, what, what is that? And, you know, asked them questions. So what's, what's the U value on these windows? And it was like a deer in the headlights <laughs> and, and they, uh, they had to go talk to their manager and then she comes back and she says, well, th- these particular windows actually don't have a U value. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everything has a U value. There yes. is a value. Um, it's okay to say you don't know what it is or it's embarrassingly high, but don't tell me they don't have one. I just raised my eyebrows. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Got yeah. it. Thank you. That's why you'll find so many of these places are revolving doors. And, you know, certainly the first place coming from Home Depot, where I worked in the window and door department and mill work there, I at least went there with some window knowledge. Most people go there with zero window knowledge. You know, they yeah. see an ad in the paper, hey, you can make good money here, you know, in home sales and and they come and so they get the, the total training right there. And it is a revolving door because if you think it's uncomfortable for the customer, I mean, it's no fun for the salespeople either. I mean, it's like, it is a high pressure, not only are you know you applying all these sales tactics but then when you get back to the office the next day and you didn't sell these two you know appointments that you actually had full you know presentations for you know that's uh, oh man you're going to why didn't you close that deal you know and and so you're in there your palms are getting sweaty before you go in because you have to come out of there with a sale you have to spend 3 hours and try to get someone to make a you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar commitment in one night. And yeah, you're trying to get that sale so bad because you want to be able to write up that number up on the board when you walk into the sales office the next day. You know, yeah. so it is. I mean, you've seen a lot of good movies, you know, your boiler room type movies. And, you know, it really is. I mean, that's the kind of room that it is. So it burns a lot of people out quickly. And so, you know, a lot of times they do, they, they, they're in that high pressure sales room and then they, you know, they've learned some things, but they decide I, I can't do this forever. That was certainly what happened with me. It just wasn't, you know, it was hard to do. And so eventually when it's creating that kind of stress, <laughs> I got to, I got to go to a, you know, you don't even know that other kind of companies exist. And then you find out, oh, well, not all companies are like this. You know, some rely more on their years in service than their, you know, reputation where they don't do the the high pressure sales. But again, a lot of these companies do because it's absolutely effective. You know, those those companies tend to have more of a, you know, 35%, you know, close ratio in there where the companies who just leave prices and leave it behind tend to be down 20 and, and sometimes below, even when they're presenting a better price, you know, because they're not doing those things to capture the moment when, you know, the, the emotion is up and the customer's excited about the product and everything else. And, you know, they've seen the heat lamp and, you know, they're really excited about how this is going to affect their house and, and to take advantage of that moment when they're like, oh, these are going to be 
good in my house. Yeah. You know, so now you got to boom, hit them with the deal. That's, that's good for right now and, and get them signed. So what, what's your close ratio, Ryan? <laughs> Actually, mine's pretty darn good because I bet. The, prices, the prices I leave behind in mine is close to 50 okay. because I'm leaving behind prices, but I just know they're, it's so rare they're ever going to get beat. And, and if they do, it's possibly by a company that, you know, hasn't had the years around like the companies I work with. So, you know, and many times it's funny too, with my situation, because I apply zero pressure, I send out the quotes, you know, sometimes they come back with some questions. I might not hear them from them for two years and then they come mm-hmm. back. Hey, okay, we're ready now. Um, can you get those, can you get those quotes updated? You know, and yeah. that's something that doesn't happen in that other world because yeah. in that other world, the part of the reason you have to close them in one day is because that price is not going to compare well with other prices that they get. You know, if they don't sign up that night, they're never coming back. Wow. You know, if they, if they get other, that's so, why it's so important. You know, the, the 10 mm-hmm. step sales process is meant to capture really nice profit margin. And so, you know, Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of it too. That's why though they can't leave prices behind in that situation. And many companies don't, they won't even leave the quote behind because they're just like, no, sorry that, you know, this is for today. And, and, uh, you know, away they go where with me, I'm obviously happy to send the email and then wait to hear back. And, you know, when the questions come, they come, if they want to meet at the showroom, that's usually the next step. It's like, okay, I see what the prices are. Sometimes I give them different price points. So here's a vinyl window, here's a fiberglass window, you know, here's a sustainable fiberglass, you know, there's, so there'll be different price points. And then it's, well, let's go meet at the showroom. You know, now that you know what the price differences are, let's go meet at the showroom and, and we can actually see full size windows and wall displays, you know, compare them next to each other. Here's a vinyl, here's a fiberglass, here's a wood, here's, you know, composite and, you know, they can kind of see, and by then they've, they've seen prices, so they know what they're dealing with. But yeah, I've had many customers who, you know, I actually just had one yesterday who, you know, I hadn't heard from since 2019 and it's like, yep, okay, we're ready. Some, cause sometimes they do just want to know what it costs and they're like, oh boy, you know, windows, Hey, you know, even, even my window prices, <laughs> I mean, windows aren't cheap, you know? Yeah. So they go, okay, well, that maybe was more than I thought it was going to be because I had no idea what it was going to be. So let's save for this this process and, you know, whether they want to use something like a, you know, 18 month no interest plan or some kind of financing plan or a center for energy and environment plan. Maybe they go, no, I just want to save up and, and do it later. Now, of course, the prices have changed a decent amount from 2019, you know, to today. Again, they I've had people come back, you know, a year or two down the line. It's a very common thing for me where I don't think that's very common with many other situations. Yeah. Oh, not. Wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We should bring this one to a close because we want to get you on again next week, Ryan. Because we you've got a four part series that you're doing for yes. me on the on the blog. And mm-hmm. I, I want to I want to kind of match our podcast with that series. So next week we're going to be talking about different materials and methods. And and we already kind of we, we we did a bit of an episode on that a couple of years ago on the podcast when we were talking about I think the title of that podcast was Vinyl Windows Are Better Than Wood. Very controversial topic. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about that next week and just talk about all the different materials so mm-hmm. people can be a little bit more educated on some of the pros and cons and and bust some of those myths around yeah. a bunch of these different types of windows. That will be part two in this series. So thank you all for listening. If you have questions for Ryan, you could send them directly to Ryan. Ryan, can you give out your email address and your website? Yeah, yeah you can send it right to Ryan at getmy3quotes.com. And that's the number three. So Ryan at getmy3quotes.com. And of course, the website then is getmy3quotes.com. That's correct. You know I mean? Okay. All yeah, right. You got it. And we will have links to both of those in the show notes. And again, thank you all for listening. Email questions if you have any. The podcast email is podcast at structuretech.com. Again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Tessa Murray signing off. This has been a Structure Tech presentation. Thank you all for listening. Take care. Mm-hmm.